trees, adored and appreciated by humans and animals alike for millennia. But in the 21st century, people are learning that while they provide things like food, shade and oxygen to breathe, they don't provide cellular service. So, are trees really that great? But thanks to technology, humankind has invented a better tree, the cell phone tree. Or, as they are officially called, stealth monopole cellular towers, topping out at about 120 feet in the LA area and featuring prices that can hit six figures, this unnatural flora has spread in recent decades because many cities mandate that communications infrastructure be concealed. As a recent exploration of Los Angeles County made clear, modern tower trees are starting to resemble actual trees, at least some of them. That's according to Alyssa Walker, who writes about urban design for Curbed. You have this nice smooth bark. It looks like kind of like a, if you see them in the real tree, it's like a skin around your elbow. And then the, the leaves, which are this like kind of fluttery silver green fronds, which some of them I see have fallen to the ground here. So maybe that is super realistic. It's like washed up here. It's like kelp that you would see like when you go to the, go to the beach. Elsewhere in LA, Frank McDonough, a botanical information consultant at the Los Angeles County Arboretum, spots a cell tower tree nestled up against a 110 freeway on ramp. Is he as impressed as Walker? If the area had just undergone a volcanic eruption, I'd say this is convincing. Oh. Uh. Taxonomically, it's very confusing. One, it has two different types of bark, and I can't figure out whether they're, that's the mature bark versus the immature bark, or whether it has some kind of biphasic taxonomy going on or what's going on. It's got a radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is when the branches on the tree come out from the trunk like spokes on a wheel. That's very common in a lot of conifers and pine trees. My question is why? I mean, I even see like this, the papery bark, which like, does that wonderful little like curly cue when you pull it off. That cannot be appreciated unless you are as close as we are. They are so, from a distance, symmetrical and unlike of what you would see in a natural tree where the, as it grows, the vicissitudes of climate and damage cause it to look somewhat off. I don't see that, so I just, in my mind, it just registers as another piece of technology. How are cell phone trees born? Through a bureaucratic entanglement that usually involves a city planning department, cellular service provider, and tower developer. We go out and say, okay, we need cell phone coverage here, or we need to add capacity here. So we, we know where we want to build the cell site. And then we have to go get permits and the jurisdiction might come back and say, not here. We want it to look like the community. We want it to blend in. So we're going to need you to design it like this. And th they might have a specific tree in mind that they want it to look like. In many cases, they're very specific. How many branches, the density of the, the tree itself. This all began in the early 1990s when one cellular carrier was denied a permit. There was a carrier that was trying to get a site approved in a little town called Monument, Colorado. It's a very rugged, beautiful area. The jurisdiction was really concerned about how that pole, how that cell tower was going to look in their community. So they initially declined that, um, you know, that request, but someone at, at, at the carrier asked if, hey, if we were to find a way to conceal this tower, would you consider it? So uh, the jurisdiction uh, decided to grant, grant them that uh, you know, conditional approval. Decades later, Valmont Larson is now one of a half dozen or so companies that produce these tree towers. Back to our cell tower safari, McDonough didn't like the look of the first tower he saw, but having discovered a palm tree varietal on the windswept edge of Watts, maybe he approves? It's like somebody's trying to be cute with a cell phone tower, you know? It's like somebody's trying to do a, a half, excuse the expression. Well, I'm not gonna use that expression, but. Okay, so he doesn't like this one either, but he at least is intrigued by its structure. If I was to take a stab at it, I'd say that it was probably a phoenix if you notice the leaves, the leaves have a, 
a very large central, what's called a rachis, and they have a, what's called a pinnate structure. In other words, they have small leaflets coming out opposite each other along that rachis. That's very common with phoenix. Also got all these birds in there that don't seem to really care whether it's fake or not. 25 miles away in the wilderness area known as Garden Grove, Walker spots a date palm tower. This, I think, is like the iconic cell phone tower as tree that most people know, but this is a very good version of it, I would say, as far as the antennas are, are packed very well into the, the crown of the tree, and it's fairly convincing. The fronds are, are very good. It's got the shape nailed in a way that it might fool you. It, you might not notice it. Nothing's more Southern California than a cell tower palm tree because Southern Californians are known not only for our palm trees, which are not native and we bring here ourselves, but for our cell phones. I mean, just go down anywhere in L.A. and keep an eye on people, and a good percentage of them are going to be... These aren't supposed to be here, but they have become part of our landscape in a way that we don't really question. Palm trees are kind of the worst, and we've planted the most of them. They provide no shade. They're very dangerous for uh, workers to maintain, and they require a lot of water. I really seriously don't mind the look of all the utility lines around LA. Again, like I go back to this question of who made these decisions that they had to be trees? Why are we trying so hard to make them be trees? One of the most popular cell tower trees is of the pine variety, seen here in Downey. This one was fabricated by Valmont Larson. I would have to say that the pine tree is, is really still my favorite. It is such a flexible design, and there's so many ways that you can tailor the appearance of some sort of coniferous tree, whether it's adjusting the color of the foliage, the length of the foliage, the sweep of the branches, the branch canopy, the branch profile. It's just really you know, rewarding and exciting to be able to have that much aesthetic control over a product. So the pine tree really is my favorite. It's pretty good. I mean, those needles are extremely fine compared to the leaves that we see on the eucalyptus and the fronds of the palm. It's a good fake. These trees are here to stay. But as more and more are being built, some people wonder, why do these towers need to be disguised at all? I'd say that it's an attempt, maybe, to ameliorate what we feel is our negative effect and really isn't. Our technology is part of who we are as organisms. Look at all of the poles around here and the lines. If you just kind of concentrate them on a little bit, you realize they don't look all that bad. They're kind of, they've got a, their own unique symmetry. They indicate people are talking to each other and communicating. They're showing how important communications are to us. They are, to me, more of like a roadside attraction is where they fall into, because you do often see them when you are uh, in more industrial places or traveling on the freeway or in more rural areas. They're not going to go undetected. You're going to see them. It's not our intention to compare a natural tree to our tree and say, you can't tell the difference. It's just how do we blend them in with the landscape that it looks like at least it's part of LA, it's part of Orange County, it's part of Riverside County, it's part of the landscape of the communities we live in. But we've taken so much time <laughs> to craft a solution for this pole that is next to a bunch of other poles. In the end, who are these really for? These towers that are made to look like trees, but aren't meant to be compared to actual trees, but hopefully are tree-like enough that you don't realize they're poles. That's the question. We know they're for cities that demand something better looking than just a tangle of metal and wires. But on an existential level, maybe they are for those who'd prefer to shut their eyes to the relentless creep of technological advancement and the devastation wrought to the natural world. Maybe they exist as further fodder for the conspiracy theorists who believe 5G is a covert means of mind control. Or maybe they're for the birds who don't concern themselves with such things. The lucky ones in all of this.